have been asking us when is our son coming. We said no, he's coming on Tuesday. So we are here waiting for you to hear from you. So I think we don't have much to say, only that you are most welcome home. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much from the chair and the co-chair of the Gulu Organizing Committee. At this juncture, allow me to invite the Honorable Minister to come and have a chat with you, the journalists. Thank you. I think this podium was chosen by for team the men. And uh, I failed to corrupt them. I, otherwise, I would have corrupted them by asking them to put a platform for me to stand on. <laughs> that, that way, I would, I would appear taller. Mr. Odojo Lak and the mayor, the team, our co-chairs of the organizing committee, members of the National Executive Committee of DP who are here, with me here, we have got the National Executive Committee member for Acholi sub-region. That is Justin Obol, simple man. We have got the president of the Uganda Young Democrats, Ismail Kiria. He sits on the National Executive Committee. We have got the vice president of the Democratic Party Women's League, Sarah Adong, who I travel with from Kampala. She was our parliamentary candidate for Zombo. We, we actually believe she won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even the NRM believes they won or yam. <laughs> <laughs> we have got Barbara Aluoko Ikano, my daughter, who is the secretary, national secretary of the Uganda Young Democrats. We have got uh, Esther Agaba, who is the deputy. Secretary of the Uganda Young Democrats, Deputy National Secretary. I believe those are the NEC members that are available. We have got those who have been our candidates who stood with us. Some of them are sitting as if they are journalists. <laughs> but some of them stood for parliament. We have Mr. Onono who stood for parliament in Noya, the original Noya. We also believe he won. <laughs> we, have, we have got Chiracholi. Chiracholi was uh, our candidate for the council here. <coughs> I will, I will, I wish I'll introduce the others. I first want to apologize for coming late. I was given an assignment by the organizing committee to, to pick t-shirts. No, even if you are a minister and a party president, you can be given assignment. So they told me that I should not come to Gulu without the t-shirts. So that was part of the reason why we delayed. I'm very grateful to the organizing committee, which includes people from all professions. Like Mr. Deutsch said, this is not a partisan activity. We have invited people with specific skills. I'm grateful that the media fraternity have turned up in full force. We have real media people like Megatech, Irene.
then we have uh, fake media people like a bold simple man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everything has a duplicate in life. Mm. You know, you have you have white hands, then you have the one they call a minya ming. You have cassava, then you have lamwaka. You have uh, malakwang, then you have the one we call guanya. <laughs> everything has its fake version <laughs> in, in life. I'm really pleased to see all of you. There are many of you that I had not seen in a long, long, long time. Like uh, Tony Onena here, who is a veteran journalist, a real one. I hadn't seen. There are younger generation of the media who I really appreciate for telling our stories. Life is about stories. And they actually love telling stories. And every story is interesting because it is unique. So all of you here, if you are to start telling us your stories, we would really be interested because it is unique. Nobody has that kind of story. But 22nd is about my story. On radio, Mega, which happily hosted us through the efforts of the leadership there and linked to another radio station. I talked a little bit about why the homecoming. People wanted this to be last year around September. But I told them that let me first feel what it is like to be inside the government. You know I've been outside the government for so long. Actually, I've never been in government, except when I was LC5 chairman. But now, the, the, the other government of Uganda have never been inside it. In our Choli tradition, when you bring a new he-goat into the compound, it is supposed to move around the compound so that its smell can be felt in every corner of the compound so that all the other goats can start wondering, this one really has a serious smell. <laughs> we wonder where it came from. So I requested that I should be allowed first to settle down in office and set priorities. Now, priorities are important because you can't do everything in life. There are many things to be done, but you must choose what you want to do. And by choosing what you want to do, then you also choose what you don't want to do. And that is what God gave us the power to do. Even Jesus, Jesus could have become a farmer because farming was also there. He could have become a businessman. He could have even decided to become a great professor. But he just chose one thing that I'm going to reconnect God with his people by dying on the cross. Only one thing. And that's why when he died, he said, it is finished. So what was finished? What was finished was his mission. There were still sick people. There were still hungry people. There were still poor people. And Jesus was saying it is finished. So you must know your mission. Now, my mission is simple, the unity and reconciliation of Uganda. That is, that is really my, my only mission. I believe that God creates all human beings to do something unique. All of you who are here, there is something God has created you to do, and it is only you who can do it. If you try to do anything else, actually you are wasting your time and wasting other people's time. So it is better you focus on what you believe is your true mission. And that's why sometimes you wonder why I don't respond to the, the hecklers. Those who are criticizing and so on. Because it is not necessary. You, you must focus on what is important. People have been asking me to come and explain 
why I led my party to cooperate with the NRM. So the opportunity will be the 22nd. But the agreement was signed by two people. So I, I only explain 50%. The other 50% has to be explained by the NRM. <laughs> yeah, because it is for, for two sides. How, how can I explain? Even the Bible has Old Testament and New Testament. And you cannot say you have read the Bible if you only read the Old Testament and you leave out the New Testament and then you only, or you read only the New Testament. I have endeavored to explain my bit. When the Democratic Party came out of 2021 20, elections, we called the National Executive Committee together with our elected members of parliament. And we decided to set three strategic goals. The first is to win power as the Democratic Party. The second, was to lead the opposition and be the main challenger to whichever party is in power. And number three, to share power substantially with whoever is in power. The word substantially is important. Substantially means it's not about positions in government. It is about setting the agenda. I'm only one minister from DP in the government. But I believe everybody would agree that we have started a new conversation in Uganda. Now, don't ask me whether we shall succeed or whether we shall fail. That's really not that does not bother me. Even when we set off from Kampala today, I didn't know we would arrive, but that wasn't my concern. The most important thing is that we were in a car and it was moving. <coughs> and moving in the right direction. Because moving is not enough. You must also be moving in the right direction. Now, there are many people who want power, but they are moving away from where power is. So I do not know how they will get it, but maybe they have another way. So after receiving that decision of the leadership of DP, I then had the opportunity to start a one year conversation with President Museveni. You know, patience is important. If it was just about the job of a minister, it would be very simple. I'm offering you a ministerial position. Thank you, sir. Come and swear in. One day, two days, that would be finished. But that's not what it was. We started conversing in June 2021. And we did not conclude until 20th of July 2022. And there were only two of us talking. Nobody was a go-between. So don't let anybody come and deceive you that I was a go-between between NRM. Of course, there are many who encouraged me. There are those who encouraged me. There are, do there are those who, Mr. Dojia, whenever I would meet him, he would say, ah, I really wish you were moving with us. Most of them, I would meet them. People, oh, most of the big NRMs, the ministers, even those who fought in the bush. But I, I told them that it is not about me. It is about the agenda and it is about Uganda. So that's what we were talking about. But Ugandans have a lot of imagination and Benaisa, the former president, once said that Kampala is a city of seven hills and seven rumors a day. So even in, in, in this actually of ours, every day there are new rumors. 
our people asked us to come home. We call it a homecoming, not because I've never been home, even now I'm home. But it is the formality of coming home. I have seen married women being escorted to their husband's home, even when they have children. You know, after the formal marriage and payment of dowry, then the aunties and the other relatives then escort her to her husband's home. She may even be pregnant, but they say, we are taking you to your home, as if she has never been there, yet she knows every corner of the home. So the homecoming is also like that. It is a formality. We have our elders who have insisted that they need to give me blessings. But above all, on that day, we shall be having also many visitors from outside our blessed Dacholi land. Members of parliament, led by the speaker herself. We shall have many members of the cabinet. We shall have many leaders from all over Uganda. But the majority will be those from the area we know as the Greater North. The Greater North, we include West Nile, Teso, Karamoja, Lao, and Acholi. That is the part of Uganda that has faced the biggest problems. It is the poorest part of Uganda. And Mr. Odoj should hear this. For us, we don't read the NRM manifesto. Our manifesto is the Juba Peace Agreement. That is our manifesto. Because that's the agreement between us who have suffered for so long and the government. It is our contract. Just like uh, Christians hold the cross. Because it is that cross which is the contract between human beings and God. There's, there's nothing else. So for us, we look at the Juba Peace Agreement. And it has everything. Whether you're talking about land, it is there. Whether you're talking about environment, it is there. Whether you're talking about reconciliation, it is there. Whether you're talking about cattle compensation, it is there. And on that day, we are going to, to distribute that, that manifesto again to all the leaders. Because many people have forgotten where we are from. This is an issue of the people. It is not an issue of NRM. It is not an issue of DP. It is an issue if even everybody who is in any political position should go with that. Because it is like a check signed by President Museven. See, if I give you my check, you put it in your pocket. And even if you find me anywhere, if the check has bounced, you have to ashamed me in front of the fellow members of the club. Whether we are at Mukumu Charo, whether we are at a pork joint, you say, but Mao, honestly, the whole of you, you gave me a check knowing that there was no money in your account. Now, that is what politics is about. So, we have a choice. Because there are many people dividing the people. Knowing fully well that when people are divided, they cannot achieve anything. Now, you don't unite because you love one another socially. You un unite because you have a cause. So, we have a choice, either to unite so that we have the ability to bargain with the rest of Uganda, particularly the government. If we are divided, we shall forever have to beg. In politics, there are two things, begging and bargaining. So where will we be? Which one do we want to choose? Do we want to, be to beg or do we want to bargain? I believe we should bargain. And you can only bargain when you show capacity. If you have my money and I come to collect it alone in your compound, I say, please, you have stayed with my money for long. When are you paying? 
you say, ah, things are bad, you go away, I'll think about it, you'll come back another time. But if I arrive with all my bodyguards, the way you have seen them, and I sit down and I say, excuse me, sir, kindly, please, pay me my money. You would listen to me, but also look at my bodyguards and say, what is he going to do if I don't give him his money? Now, that's what they call bargaining. Bargaining is about capacity. So anybody who is dividing our people is an enemy of the people. And it doesn't matter how they divide the people. Because nowadays there are many ways of dividing the people. You can start negative propaganda. You can start attacking individuals. Fortunately, everybody has a record. And the record is in the public. Unless if you are born yesterday. If you are born yesterday, then you have no record. But if you are someone we have been seeing around, we can also open your book and tell the people who you are. But that time hasn't come. Because for me, I believe that if I'm at the stream bathing, then a madman comes and picks my clothes and runs away with the clothes. I don't need to chase the madman because people will think I'm the one who is mad. At least the madman will have some torn clothes as he runs. Now me, I'll be stuck naked. People will say, look at Mao. I think he, his wires are connected. <laughs> Others have asked, why have we put the theme, it's time? Somebody even called me and told me, you know, the government may not like that theme. It's time for what? Then I said, which government? I sit there in that government. Nobody has shown any concern. It's time to reconcile. It's time to forgive one another. It's time to unite. But it is also time to assert ourselves that this is our country. We are not second class citizens. It's time for all that. And that doesn't mean we are fighting anybody. My people, they actually are very interesting. In 1990, when I wanted to contest for Gil president of Makerere, they called me for a meeting and told me, our son Mao, we have suffered so much, don't increase our pain. Your parents have struggled. You are from a humble, poor background. Please study, get your degree and go and get a job. Don't cause us headache again. You see, what the Titos and the Basilios did, they went and got hold of the government. When they were overthrown, they ran away. Those who chased them followed them and destroyed our home. Don't do the same. Don't be like the bull that provokes fights. In our language, called Latuenke Remu. Always uh, goring others with its horns. And the, horn, the horns are bloody. They told me not to contest. But more importantly, they told me that I have no chance of winning because there actually are few. But I told them, but I'm not going to campaign only among the actually. Baganda will vote for me. Banyankole will vote for me. When I won, then they were the first to say, yes, 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 you know, we are, we are still around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we the actually, we are still around. Food what yeah. Again, when I wanted to be president of DP, they told me, that party can never elect a non-Muganda. They said, 
You are not even uh, from a Catholic family. You know my family, the best is Anglican. I'm the one who got baptized as a Catholic because of education and a few of our people. Some of you who came to bury my father, you must have found two Protestant bishops to pray for my father. So they said, ah, ah, you can't win, you cannot. But I told them, Sebana Kizito is a Protestant, he's indeed the president of DP. Said, now yours is worse because you are not even a Muganda. Now, after I won, they said, oh, now DP is really a national party. Now it can vote somebody who is from outside Uganda. I have done everything I can. And I'll never repay my people. I owe them too much. We hear people talking. Others even claiming I'm not an Acholi. Unfortunately, both my parents are dead, so I don't know this DNA thing, whether <laughs> we should go into it. But everybody who knows my father can testify that I'm his son. But that is how low our politics has sunk. Unfortunately, you find young people with earphones in the village listening nonsense to nonsense. You listen to nonsense, you don't have food in your house. You don't have school fees for your children. You can't even buy clothes for your wife. And you are just there. So, what does it add to your, your life? So, me, I like to do things which are sensible also. My problem is not another person. Actually, my problem is not anybody here. My problem cannot be Odochi. My problem is how my neighbors can have seeds. Now it is a planting season. My neighbors come to me. The other day I even built a two-kilometer road as if I'm the local government for, for the people. I begged the Gulu district to give me machines but I had to look for the fuel to open a road so that ambulances that the MPs are buying can have a road to pass on. Because <coughs> you can buy ambulance, but it's not just for the town. Can it go to the villages? So we, we must, we must uh, address real problems rather than fake problems. People's tribes and what, those are not real problems because nobody chooses. Nobody, did you fill an application form to be an Acholi? You didn't. So we are opening a new chapter from 22nd. And anyway, I love a good fight. You all know me. And I think I've been provoked enough. So there's going to be some serious fighting for the future. I'm not fighting for myself. I'm now fighting for our children. That fight must be... And the children of Uganda, we must now fight for the future of Uganda. Others are still obsessed with President Museveni. But what if he doesn't wake up tomorrow? So will your problems have ended? Yeah. Sometimes people go to bed and in the morning they don't wake up. So will your problems have ended? Will you now have tuition? Will you, will you now have school fees? Will some, will some deposit appear on your bank account mysteriously? The sun will still rise from the east and set in the west, no matter what you do. So, there is a Uganda beyond President Museveni. But President Museveni must be part of designing that Uganda. Now, in Uganda today, there are two types of politicians. There are those who say President Museveni is irrelevant. The only thing that we should do is just to remove him. That's what some people say. We call them regime change fundamentalists. And their ideology is regime change fundamentalism. That is the group that said Mugabe is the problem of Zimbabwe. 
Lava Cherokee make it. Zimbabweans are still there. Even the army deceived them. You know, the army came, the, the people came on the streets. For the first time, they were climbing on tanks, APC. They were posing, not knowing that. You know, you, before I follow you, I must know where you are going. To follow somebody that tire like that. <laughs> <laughs> so when the army reached State House, that was the end. They now turned the guns on them. <laughs> they swore themselves in. The other president, who is called the crocodile, is now the president. General Chiwenga, who forced Mugabe to sign resignation, is now the vice president. They ended up, by the way, when you wear a shoe, the shoe is not the one traveling. You are the one traveling. <laughs> so when you reach where you are going, you leave the shoe outside and enter. Because you have arrived. The shoe has arrived, but it is not your company companion. It is just a tool. <coughs> so, in my life, I don't mind people deceiving me. And I've been deceived many times. And many times people have tried to deceive me. But I will never deceive myself. So, a shoe must not deceive itself that it is also going anywhere. A shoe cannot be going anywhere. The shoe is just for walking on. Like that donkey that took Jesus. Is that, was it the donkey that was going to deliver us? Just a means of transport. In fact, when the donkey went back alone, it wasn't welcomed even. <laughs> because when Jesus arrived, people threw their clothes on the ground. They were waving palm branches, leaves. The donkey went back alone and asked, what has happened? I'm not seeing the welcome. It forgot that it was just a means of transport. So, from 22nd, we must reposition the greater north in the politics of Uganda. And it is not about me. And the NRM will be our partner. A serious partner Not giving leftovers, not telling lies, because first and foremost, it is the NRM politics which made Uganda to think we are bad people. Our people are not bad people. The bad people are individuals. They must be named. You cannot say actually are killers. Was Janani Luoma a killer? Was Professor Odonga a killer? Was Dr. Lukuya a killer? Was Engineer Drale a killer? If there's any killer, they must be named. We cannot say there's a tribe which is full of good people. There are good people and bad people in every tribe. So, repositioning means you choose what you are good at. In the Olympics, the Chinese don't play basketball. They go for gymnastics. You can't beat them. The Americans play basketball. They are very poor in football. Sometimes you hear America being beaten 9-0. How can you, a superpower, be beaten 9 Because that's not your game. So we must choose where we are strong. That's what you call positioning yourself. For instance, there's nobody who can talk about Sim Sim in, in, in Uganda except the Acholi. But can we talk about Matoke? We are, we are not Matoke people. So, positioning yourself means you must decide where you are strong. We have intelligent, honest people. God has given us a lot of fertile land. 
Acholi land is the size of the Republic of Rwanda. The whole of Rwanda is the size of Acholi land. But what are we doing? We are not talking about how to use the land strategically. Instead, we waste our time as, as for the politician. So and so is fighting me. So and so wants my constituency. I'm told I'm also being dragged in the constituency politics. I had a constituency and I left it. When I wanted it back, electoral commission chased me away. So I left. Now I'm permanently pursuing the executive branch only. That's now my branch. I've chosen my branch. Now my branch is the executive branch. Not the judiciary, not the legislature or parliament. But when I came here, the story was that Mao is looking for a parliamentary seat. I cannot look for a parliamentary seat. It is a parliamentary seat that can look for me. <laughs> so is there a parliamentary seat looking for me? Let them tell me whether there's a parliamentary seat looking for me. <laughs> because me, I'm not looking for a parliamentary seat. The constituency, more matika yinyo mao. Mao petika yinyo constituency. Then they go to, to, to spread insecurity to very high ranking people, telling them after he has got the constituency, then he's coming for you. Actually, these people talking nonsense have really made me to appear so powerful. You, you really think that this Mao almost can turn a man into a woman and vice versa. Because the way they talk about me, you can really think that this Mao has so much power he can... I don't mind. <laughs> In life, there are two types of people. Builders and blockers. There are those who build, then there are those who block. On the 22nd, we will do roll call. And we shall line up the builders. We shall also name those who are blocking the future. In the book of Nehemiah, those of you who read, you know Tobiah. Tobiah and his other friend, they were blocking Nehemiah, here known as Nehemiah. Nehemiah wanted to defend Jerusalem, because this is our Jerusalem. We want to build a wall and defend it. But Tobiah says, ah, who is this uh, Nehemiah? What can he do? In fact, they came to fight him so that he does not build the wall. So, they were building with one hand, while one hand is holding a spear. So, if need be, that's what we are going to do. We shall build while defending the wall at the same time. So on that day, I believe builders will be the majority. Blockers will also be there. But they will discover that they have no future. Because what matters is not what you feel and experience at the present. What matters is how it ends. There are those who thought Jesus had lost because he had been crucified. But actually, it is the Roman Empire which lost. Where is it now? It's not there. It collapsed. But that mission of Jesus has achieved a lot. So, <coughs> on 22nd, we shall refocus our energies to free our people from poverty. Because now in Uganda, 
For every problem, there is only one answer. It is called IMF. IMF means it's Museveni's fault. <laughs> yeah, everything in Uganda, IMF. So if you have no school fees, IMF. <laughs> if you don't weed your garden and the weeds overtake the crops, it's Museveni's fault. Champo chair. <laughs> but you spend the whole night drinking, you wake up at midday, but the, the weeds don't sleep. They keep growing. Then tomorrow is <laughs> Musevi. That that is that is uh, good politics. So to the NRM we say not every criticism is opposition. It is just criticism so that something is done better. It is very important. So NUSAF is starting. We need strong watchdogs, counselors. I'm giving a gift on that day I'll be launching a campaign to build a leadership institute. I've been struggling to pay for the land. We now have about 15 acres in Pabuo. We are going to build that institute so that we train leaders. I no longer want to hear this thing of Telogake Kumaugi. How can you say Telogake Kumaugi? Every time is different. You need new, new types of leaders. They don't have to be like us. We must build the leaders for tomorrow. Because by the time, actually by the time you graduate from Guru University, your knowledge is already irrelevant. So you must have the, you, you must learn how to learn. The second gift we are giving is so many seedlings. We are going to be distributing hundreds of thousands of seedlings from roofings. We have talked with the roofings. So we are going to ask everybody to plant trees. We can fight the charcoal banners, we can stop the lorries, but we must also plant trees. The two go hand in hand. We are going to help the sub-county governments. We are going to draft by laws. I've talked with the Attorney General. We are going to draft by laws, tough by laws, for every sub-county that is affected and under the presidential executive order. So, sub-counties will now be able to impose fines and collect money. I am not a believer in imprisoning people because when you imprison people, you feed them. For some people, actually, they feel happy that you are taking care of them. They can neglect their wife, they can neglect their children. But you stay home, pay a fine. And community service. We have many primary schools that need Feed latrines, you know, you need labor for digging them. The government is going to also build seed schools mm -hmm. in the sub counties that don't have seed schools. So we want to know. Yesterday I spoke to the Minister for Higher Education, Honorable Chrysostom Muingo. The World Bank is threatening to take away money because the local governments are not availing the sites for building the government seed schools. So we in Acholi should be vigilant and quickly get school because the only way we can compete with the rest of Uganda is through education and quality education. We expect our MPs to join us. I met some of them, I'm going to meet them again. 
and they are very supportive. We believe that under the leadership of our co-chairman, who I have known for a very long time, you know, Otim Joffrey, when he was a young man, was working in my office, my parliamentary office. Now, when you are a big man and you are working with people, don't see them the way they are. See their potential. We have leaders who once you are their assistant, you must stay their assistant forever. <coughs> But we must allow people to grow. T tomorrow, a team can even overtake me. That's important in life. So, from being my assistant, he came to the municipal council, he came mayor of division. We wanted him to be mayor of uh, Gulu Municipal Council, but because of these politics of uh, hitting one another without a purpose, they voted for somebody else who created a mess. But that was also good. I said that bad leaders come to teach people a lesson. So Gulu Municipality also got its lesson that time. So now is the mayor of the Laro Peje. I'm very grateful to him. Odoch has been all over. Odoch, Odoch is of He's a field man. He's a man. You see even the way he's dressed. The day I see your Deutsch wearing a tie. I bet me you're going to do more. Honestly, can you produce a picture of a Deutsch wearing a suit and a tie? I know. Very well to go. I know. He's the man of the field. He doesn't like meetings. I'm sure now he's so bored. <laughs> One day, even the chairman of his party, the president, was around. We were having an event. Odoj sat there. They were presenting. I could see Odoj. He would stand up and go to his people. He was very bored. So that is him. So everybody in the committee has their special, special purpose. There are those who are disciplined, like Mega Tech. There are those who are chaotic, like Simple Man. <laughs> there are those who are very structured, like uh, uh, Tim. They like, you know, these rules following. Then there are those like Odoch who want to move things. They are more interested in the objective than Pope the Baluchawa, but down on the corner procedure in the team. So. Me, I know, I know the people we are working with, and all of them, they they add value. They are they are very very important. So, the occasion will be a big success. There was there will be dancing, and generally a celebration. Afterwards, we shall go to other districts. The one of Bulu is just a beginning. Then we shall go to the rest of Uganda. Because this message must reach the rest of Uganda. The rest of Uganda has been fearing us. You know, once you have hurt somebody, you think that they have a bad intention. But we must assure the Uganda government that for us in Acholi, once we say we have forgiven one another, it is okay. We did bending of spears with West Nile. You know what happened? The way some of the Idi Amin soldiers really killed our people. It was very bad. Wafulo Gutu was a, a student at Teso College, Aloe. He said, there are Choli and Lang soldiers who were killed. Their bodies were dumped at the water source where the taps that are in Teso College got their water from. He told me himself that they would open the tap and you see blood. It was so painful. That is why some of our sons, when they came from Tanzania, they first forgot the way home. 
They first went to West Nile to revenge. But they were killing innocent people, women, babies. Eventually, our elders said, no, let's go to West Nile and do the bending of spears. Go Motong. They did it, and we are at peace. Even this power thing, we have already drafted an instrument under the Attorney General's chambers. The Chief Justice was consulted, and the names of members of the Commission of Inquiry are already there. I believe the President will sign that instrument soon, and then everybody who has an issue against anybody, those who are cutting trees for business, those who are grabbing land in a bar, the Commission of Inquiry will come up with their reports. You know, the truth moves slowly, but it overtakes lies. So I want to assure our people in a bar, there will be justice. Sometimes justice is slow to come, but it is sure it will be there. See, even in the Bible, they say Satan will be arrested, and we wonder why he's not arrested now. Then they say they will imprison him for a thousand years. But he's busy terrorizing people. So even those who are terrorizing people in a power, their day will come, and there will be justice. So we hope on the 22nd, the big people from government will have the opportunity to assure people that the government can protect the weak, not just the strong. That the government can protect the poor, not just the rich. That the government can protect all Ugandans, no matter where they come from. That is more important than even the PDM money. Because people can work. I don't know how much 100 million can do in a parish, but if the government can guarantee that, you know what, your land will not be taken, you can feed your family. That is good enough. Those are the many reasons why we shall have this homecoming and Thanksgiving. I want to summarize very briefly in Luo, because I, I know to avoid rumor mongering. Guma bene ichiambichel alore radio. Ange mere loka copyright. Mega tech loka copyright mere ange ato kau no tuero no iramu konyo. Yo mukereme media houses under the. NRM DP cooperation agreement so that they also get that voice. Amiro for your Yomatika Telo, Yop, many in the Piruario, Nefo Eruba, Kime Jo Lapayo, where I've been a going doga, Meti Roque, Lutua. Tien lok, ma we are party, ma anador we, ma chalo DP. Wakero chingwa, meri pe meti kachel, mene anoni, luak me Uganda obed ki, gen, ni te la romo loke la boin koko koko, me ario, wa romo rocho penchir, ma dek, wa romo timo kija, Kinwa ke ken wa machal utino ijachiel Uganda. Kibene. Mene anu ni waporo lo. Wan machala nyuali me Uganda. Gin ma kiluoni national dialogue. Wabiberu ki wele ma pol. Lumea me parliament. Ma la wi wela wi gi speak a me parliament. Ministers lo wara. Diplomats, ki wele ma pol. Wano tika rai chene ki kuo kateno. 
Dunguna mogo tika wachini Gamente Doti ya okeru Bilion a chel Ki milion mi ario Iyopi eni Menu gopa Kawa yop mena mugongo Gamente okeru bilion a chel Ken Ki eni kono Chene eni wano tika raine Wani komwa Pien Yoma maro Ni Uganda Uwaranyim duong Loe joma Mete Uganda Odok chen Ni ena eni bewa bifo ilu ba Pien Muku ma pikuona Ana dano ma Imwaka alibariyo Kapawi ya nguen Ki alibariyo kapawi ya bi Tuo chuba malip Mawa toa na bena no dong Dano wajo odong Ni do dong yi Ento kita waji radio ni Ana ti chalo la fout ma ti Ge kal Makun la piru ma tek ti Ngara chela chel ron waji ni Ah la fouti dong to la fouti dong to Chibe neno pe to Kun la fout ma yi oti ka to ba Eno en mati wako Ma la piru ma tek ti Ti ka ngere ni Doge neno ni pe to Ntua kari wa la mero Poruno do o idi kale Idong ki yuwayo ki teri o ati Kay no ti ka chari yo Iti wa idong oko Wa idong Dong poro dong poro Eno be no ni pe poro Dong wan ma chala chori wa ti ki pera ma poro Eno wa bi o Pien lo ba marwa o mini wa ngom ma chako cham Mini wa dano ma riek Bene nying wa ki balo Eno ki balo nono Kalo tiena wa mogo kuti mje maraji lobo Uganda Ki luongi ki nyingi Eno pe ki luongi ki nyingi kaha 